Hello everyone, welcome back to episode three of The Only Networking Show. So The Only Networking Show brings you networking news, chat, member spotlights from only the business network for people who like people. I'm joined by my co-host and wife, Kelly. Hello Kelly. Hello everyone. You alright? Yeah, good. All good. good. We've got a special guest. Alice Fewings. Hello, yeah. Alice. Hello. LinkedIn Thanks for rock me. star. <laughs> Thanks. I try. <laughs> Knows a thing or two about LinkedIn. So, um, it, Alice is our guest on Only Talks this month, talking about building a global network on LinkedIn. We've got her on the show today. She's going to get involved in the chat, and we're going to have a little interview. Lovely. Find out a little bit about you. So fantastic, mm-hmm. Kelly. News. News. Great British entrepreneur Great awards. British entrepreneurs. Yes. We didn't win. We're not bitter. Not as bitter as we were last. No, we joke. Um, it, yeah, what an experience. So very lucky to be in the finals two years running. This year we were Family Business of the Year finalists, which obviously was amazing for us because, if you don't know, husband and wife, daughter works for us, my mum works for us, we've got a charity because of my other daughter, etc., etc. So very much a family-run business, but also we call it the only family. We try not to talk about that too much because it sounds a bit twee, but our members always say how it does feel like a family community spirit. So we were really excited to be up for that award and it was in person. So Grosvenor House in Park Lane, fantastic. We were sat at home we got last year. Up. We got dressed up, posh frock, went for the weekend and it was fantastic. I mean, 1,200 people, a gorgeous setting, Brilliant event. We didn't win, unfortunately, but we were up against some cracking competition. And to shout out really to our table, we were really lucky to have Steph Ellswood from um, Shop Sustainable and her family, Steve Ellswood, Treacle 7, who we met last year. Yeah, just the loveliest family. And we were like, this is a great omen because Family Business of the Year Award, we're sat with a lovely family. Unfortunately, no, but there you go. But it was lovely to have those guys there. And I mean, Steph's award was up for Young Entrepreneur entrepreneur of the year award wow that category that was the caliber was ridiculous huge, wasn't it, wasn't it? So, there were real brands there as well i mean it, when you're seeing brands that you think oh i see them in the supermarket mm-hmm. you realize that this is a you know quite a legitimate thing i do worry a little bit about steph because i said oh is your family quite like succession and they hadn't seen it if you haven't seen succession They're a very successful family, brilliant (laughs) show, but they're not the nicest people. So I hope you guys don't watch that back and think... That was an insult. Yeah, no, not at all. It wasn't meant to be that way for sure. But yeah, I mean, a a wonderful evening and a real good chance to go out. Although we did say when we left, interestingly, and obviously we champion online, we love everything online because it's just so efficient. But this year we met fewer people than we did last year being online because we were put into breakout room speed networking we met some amazing contacts that we still talk to now um and this year other than who was on our table we didn't really speak to anyone jenny from netno who's a connection through only and you know congratulations to you too jenny for getting into the final um but other than seeking those guys out we didn't get an opportunity to speak so you know the world's still getting back to something isn't it that's partly logistical, and we'll bring you in a second, mm. Alice, to talk about mm. this online dynamic, but mm. partly logistical, they combined all of the regional awards into one. So there was just a lot to get through, mm. wasn't there? So there wasn't really any opportunity to get up, go and mingle with mm. the tables, and people got quite restless because of that, didn't they? Because mm. they wanted to go and talk to yeah. people. So I think there would have been more of that if they didn't try and pack everything in. But... There is a definite shift in dynamic that we were talking about before we started recording about this. People don't know what to do when they meet in person now in networking. Yeah. You've got quite a clear view of this, Alice, haven't you? Yeah. I just know I will be super awkward if I go (laughs) face-to-face networking again. I used to love it, but that was all we ever knew, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And now we've been doing online for nearly two years. It's going to come up to. And I think... I think I said earlier, it's just become like the new comfort zone, but a really good comfort zone, not one that you think you shouldn't really be sitting in. Actually, it's a comfort zone that's also effective and it's good for business. Um, Yeah, and I just always love online means you can meet so many more people Mm. than just the same 20 people in a room. Albeit, you do have good, close relationships with the people if you do see them quite regularly face-to-face. So I'm sure there's a world for both. But It's the choice bit though isn't it and I Mm. think this is the thing you put a load of people in a room together 
I think particularly if you become used to online, which is really well structured. Yeah. I don't have to think, what am I going to say to this person as an icebreaker? Am I going to have, which we invariably will, the same conversation with everyone? Oh, have we met in person before? Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, aren't what's it tall? like? Aren't you tall? What's it like <laughs> coming out and meeting again? It's We forgot you've said this. I, that's small talk. Yeah, I've you? been to a few a couple of events lately. So I uh, went to the Barrow Club in Brighton mm. um, last week and it was fantastic. Give a it, shout out to Chris. To Chris, yes. Thank Chris you, Chris. Lot, Man, I do, yeah. Chris Mansfield for inviting me down. And I got to meet people. And do you know what was great for me? So two and a half hours to get there, walked in the room and people were saying to me, oh, you own only. And they'd recognise me yeah. through LinkedIn. Perfect. Because obviously my picture's on everything. And that yeah. was incredible for brand awareness. And I met everybody there was just lovely. It was great. The drive there three hours for the dinner the drive back now of course if you're in Brighton you knock five hours off straight away of course you can but it's still half a day out what have I achieved yeah. in that time now if I look at it that I went and I met some lovely people mm -hmm. for a lunch and I've built a relation 100% yeah. I did that completely yeah. and there mm -hmm. were lots of people in the room when I said about online they went oh no no, you know, I, I've avoided that and I don't want to go down that route. And I completely respect that because it isn't for everybody. But if you want it to form part of your regular networking, you can't just rely on that because there just isn't enough hours in the day anymore yeah. for that Well, stuff. you did the FSB <laughs> event. Yeah. Uh, Hampshire and Isle of Wight. Give yeah, a shout yeah, out to thank Tim. thank you for Tim for getting me on there, definitely. But you said oh, I probably met more people and made more connections that I would then follow up with yeah. via LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah after that event as you did at the one in person yeah, so it's that thing isn't it about okay and we've had this conversation with people yeah but I love meeting in person mm. it's my preference but your preference isn't always the best business decision is it I think just be open-minded isn't it you go to do this for this reason and then actually once twice a month I'd go back to the Barrow Club it was mm. lovely great yeah. food lovely people <clears throat> for a different reason and I'm sure I'll make good connections there and, mm. and they'll further that but it's a mixture of what you want it to be, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think also recognising in yourself what you... So, like, introvert, extrovert, that kind of thing, mm. where you naturally do thrive. Yes. So even though I know I come across quite bubbly and smiley, I'm really an introvert inside. And I used to always be nervous. when, Even if it was going to my regular networking group um, before the pandemic... I would always feel a bit nervous and apprehensive of like, oh, I've got to stand up, all eyes are on me, that kind of feeling. And so when actually online networking came, I'm like, I'm in the comfort of my own home. Yeah. I feel completely safe because I'm in control of, you know, Zoom and all those kind of things. Yeah. And now I'm thriving in that environment, even as an introvert. So I think as well, sometimes finding where you fit and thrive is a really good thing. You don't have to be as loud, do you? You were saying to us before, you came to Only London, wasn't it? Yeah. One of our newer groups. And you did really well from it, even yeah. though... You didn't actually Probably, have that much yeah. opportunity to speak. Like percentage wise, in you know, the beginning bit, we had obviously had the 10 minute breakout room and, and at the end. So to the group, two minutes of talking, mm. three leads off the back of it. Mm. So, yeah. Just shows you. If you, yeah. know, if you know your proposition and come across well, this is what you can achieve. Um, one of the speakers at the at the event was Stephen Bartlett. Mm -hmm. Really fantastic guy. He's the latest dragon. If you mm. don't know Stephen, look him up, look up his podcast. Um, he started in 2014. This gave us quite a lot of encouragement, didn't it? Because yeah. we had to remind ourselves, we started only in 2018 whilst running other businesses. We only really started it in earnest in 2019. Mm. And we're already mixing up with, you know, multi-million pound businesses. Mm -hmm. He you know, meteoric rise in yes. starting in 2014. Um, but he's still really humble, isn't he? Yeah. He's still, you know, really trying to help other businesses. But the bit that stood out for me, he said, if you're going to, what's he's always asked, what what's a good business owner? Who's going to make it? And he said, you need to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. You need to have a continuing sense of why you're doing it, because mm. otherwise you just kind of fall off the track. And you need resilience to keep going when any other sane person would throw in the towel. Mm. And I thought that was brilliant because he talked about the days that they didn't think they could pay the staff and that happened on an all too regular basis. But you always find a way to get there, didn't it? And I just thought, what a brilliant way to talk yeah, about and he, it. Yeah, and he talked about the reason you do it because we, we talk about this a lot, don't we, in all the motivational speakers, etc. what's your why and everything else. And 
he said I just needed to earn money because I didn't come from a great background and mm. I wanted to provide for my family because I just wanted something different. And yeah. I think we're too reluctant to say we just want to make some money. We're business owners and we want to make some money. So yeah. I really applauded him for that. But yes, that bit when he said when you just think I can't do this again, I just can't go again, you just got to keep doing it. Definitely. Yeah. Any thoughts on Stephen Partlett? Yeah, I mean, I've been <clears throat> following his journey for a long time. So um, because he's definitely got a lot more well known now yes. from Dragon's Den. I was saying I saw him on this morning the other day. Um, he's got a podcast with really good guests on it. Really interesting discussions. But of course, he's a social media person. So mm. I've known about him for quite some time. And I think one thing he always taught me was he's very generous with his content. Mm. So the advice, the top tips, the strategies, obviously the motivational quotes, things like that. Yeah. But he's always given to his audience, whether it's on Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, whatever social media platform it is, he has been generous with that. And I think that's helped to build the following mm. um, and, of course, then his business. So... Yeah. He built a community, didn't he? I yeah. always think he's a bit like Gary Vaynerchuk, like a UK version yeah. in terms that he gets there. If you don't talk to people, you can yeah. be the cleverest content person in the world and output all yeah. this amazing stuff. No one really cares until you get into the engagement yeah. side of it. So, yeah. yeah, fantastic. And if you look at his post, when he gets loads of comments, go and look and he's replying to people. And right. I think that always shows the quality of the person that's looking to build a community, not just put a post out and get the likes and the comments. Yeah. He's there to actually listen, learn, and show people that he's the person that's doing the content Great creation. So. Well, even at the event, and he's got no reason to do this anymore. I mean, he's got his money, hasn't he? He's done so well. Mm -hmm. He There was basically a queue of people, and he had a table in the middle of the thing. He didn't get, like, divered off into the no. corner. He <laughs> sat in the middle... And every person that come up to our knowledge, he spoke to and gave them time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that speaks volumes. I think you yeah. need to be that way, don't you? Mm. Amazing. So that's yeah. probably enough of it. So look, watch out next year. We'll see what we can do next year. We're going to do it again. <laughs> probably. You've got to keep going. <laughs> you just <laughs> said you got can't give well, up. Got to well, keep going. This is true. <laughs> got to do it. There we go. Decision made. So only New York yes. should be out not long after this show goes out but we've had an interesting experiment this month only that we wanted to share some of the results so just a simple question we asked the members um, on each of the meetings where is your furthest located client and we kind of thought oh we didn't really know we'd had conversations yeah. before hadn't we and yeah. you'd got clients particularly stateside and we thought oh that would be good for if we could get a few of those yeah I think we could pretty much fill a world I map think we could with yeah. businesses that wouldn't class themselves as being global businesses. I mean, I'll just run through the list. There were some incredible places. Um, Jim talked about Czech Republic, Belgium, Elsie, Seattle. Uh, Paul talked about Canada. I've got to just list off some of the countries. Iceland, Spain, China, that was Gaz. Mm. Um, Kenya, Uzbekistan, Eastern China, Perth, well, Australia, Thailand, Loads for Australia, Japan, Indonesia, Brazil, Poland, Bali, goes on and on. Oh, That's Grant amazing. Notman said um, he did some work for people that put materials on the International Space Station. So he's claimed the moon. <laughs> Loves the worst one. Good old Grant, he had to take it. Roy Alloway, New Zealand. I mean, New Zealand, you ain't getting much further away than that. Yeah, so. true. That's probably when Grant came in to try and trump him. <laughs> but this was fascinating, wasn't it? Because... This whole notion of building only New York to bring together businesses, that almost seems like, yeah, when you start to realise mm. that these not global businesses are already trading around yeah. the world and we just want to create a forum to bring together people from UK and New York, it's almost like it's not ambitious enough. Well, I've been talking to people in the last couple of weeks and actually I still... The point isn't to just take only and plonk it in the US. Because you can build a US network. You don't have to call it only. You can do that. And the point is to bring people from across mm. the water together that yeah. want to work together. So it's not like, well, we're not going to mix people and we're not, we're not going to want to make connections. The whole point is the niche of bringing the two countries together. So it is probably quite an out there concept for those guys because, I don't, well, as far as I know, there's nothing else that does it in that way with that kind yeah. of messaging. So it very much is... If you're in the US and you're in the UK and you want to work together or you want to collaborate, 
want to work in each other's spaces, yeah. then we're going to bring you guys together. I think it's what's fascinating about it is that, you know, most of our members are networkers, funnily enough, who's a lot of their business would have come locally. You know, we've talked about this before, that networking used to be restricted to the 20 miles that people would drive to go to a networking event. Mm. Online's blown that out of the way. The point is there, they're already getting global clients without Mm. a forum to meet global clients. Mm. So it, you know, maybe I'm just trying to big us up and say, aren't we really clever? But We'll check in six months here as well. When when it's failed. (laughs) But do you know what? That list you had there, if all those same people had said what their furthest away client was two years yes. ago, you know, end of 2019, mine was Dorset and I'm based in Portsmouth. Yeah. So, and now it's Hong Kong. So I think like so much has changed in the last 18 months, hasn't so it? True. And yeah, now we've got all these opportunities and if only can give us another opportunity, we yeah. might as well make the most of it. I'm super <laughs> excited for New York. <laughs> when did it change for you? Was it quite early mm. on in the lockdown yeah, it was only because I just suddenly was like, I think this is the break I've been waiting for. So I yes. jumped on it straight away because I had been desperate to move more online because doing local, I mean, I do love working with people face to face, but you find networking, you kind of go to as many as you can, you kind of know the people that are there. And I was starting to think I'm going to have to travel for two or three hours to find a new group of people. Um And of course, when you work face to face, you have the travel time in there as well. And of course, when I do LinkedIn, like it's a no brainer, of course, it can be online. And so I moved all my stuff that had been planned as face to face. I moved that online. And because it worked so well, I was like, I'm just going to keep doing this. And then I use LinkedIn in a slightly different way to tap into, you know, global rather than just focusing on a local specific area. And then it just took off. So, yeah. It's just being aware of the potential of that, mm-hmm. isn't it? LinkedIn in particular. Why are you only connecting with people that live around yeah. your way? Yeah. Because there's a whole world out there, there isn't there? There's a whole world out there. Amazing. 800 million people, if I'm being specific. <laughs> <laughs> On LinkedIn, anyway. <laughs> got time for that. Not for that many people. Um, okay, well, watch this space. Mm, yeah. So, um, yeah, each month we're going to try and give you a little gem, a little nugget of information to take away. So this month we're talking about the attendance sheets. So for us specifically at Only, we produce an attendance sheet with everybody's uh, details on their email address, website, whatever it is that you guys give us when you book on. And making sure that you do a little bit of homework before the meeting. So if you go to other events, other networking attendance sheets exist, I'm sure. If you go to a meeting where you don't get a sheet, this is going to obviously be a little bit tricky. But you might know who's going to be in attendance. You might know who the regulars are, etc, etc. Point here is, do a little bit of homework. Okay, so as Alice was saying, if you're with the same 20 people each month, you generally know who they are. But do you know when they've got a new service? Do you know when they've got a new update? Do you know if they've changed their website? Point here is go through the sheet, think about who's going to be there and take a look at their social media. Have a look at their latest blog. You might actually find something you really want to look at, right? So take a look at it because when you then get put into a breakout room with them or you're having a follow-up with them or you're talking to them in the meeting, you can refer to that. Mm -hmm. And we all want attention, guys. We all strive to get attention. So as we always say, what's the best way? Give attention to gain attention. So if you're in a breakout room with somebody and that morning you've read a bit of their blog and something's resonated with you, tell them because they will remember you because you've read their blog and you've mentioned it to them. There's not a point, and you say about this, about networking, guess who? The point of your homework isn't to kind of eliminate those people that aren't going to be good for you. Absolutely not. The point here is to just get a bit of familiarity with the people that are in the room. When I host a meeting, I'll go through and I'll look on LinkedIn to see who's coming and I'll recognise them when they come into the room. So it automatically makes me treat them a bit differently because Mm. it's somebody that I'm expecting to see and it's not out of the unusual for me. So It's so obvious, isn't it? And I thought about when you said about this earlier and I thought you do have to avoid that tendency to cherry pick the person that you think Mm. they might be a lead or a potential referral. But if you're leaning a little bit cynical about it, if if you go onto a networking call and go, Oh, hi, Alice. Oh, it's great to meet mm-hmm. you. I read your blog the other day. And that point that you made about the three steps, you will immediately leapfrog mm. that person in your sphere of attention. Yeah. Be the same with Andy, wouldn't it? Oh, Andy, that video I watched, that the six-minute mark, 
that little cool little bit that you did, Andy's going to bristle up. Oh, he is literally doing it now. <laughs> it was five minutes, actually. But you, you get the point, don't yeah. you? It's such a good way to make people... I'm quite amazed often when I have a one-to-one with people who go on to that one-to-one and don't know, know anything. Yeah. I'll always, even if it's five minutes before, jump on their website and mm. say, oh, that looked quite interesting. I didn't know you did that. And it's just a really good icebreaker, isn't it? I just think it's common courtesy, isn't it? You know, if somebody's going to take the time to talk to you, you kind of need to know what it is you're talking mm. to them about. It, it, even if it's for no other reason than if it goes a bit awkward and you don't really gel, you, you've got a common ground. So that, that would be our tip for kind of this month, is just to do your homework a little bit. And particularly for those people that you do see a lot of the time, see what's going on, what's new for them. Is there something you can help them with? Is there a connection that you're seeing them trying to look for that you could probably help with so yeah do your homework and see who's going to be around and, and find out a bit more about them <laughs> so for the final part of the show we're going to speak to our special guest alice i've got a little bio for you alice it's Ooh. a very short one i'm going to add a bit at the end because it is too short alice <laughs> is a linkedin coach stroke trainer and profile writer she is the host of the linkedin collective and she helps business owners win on linkedin and she's also, if you've ever been on an only meeting, a constant ray of sunshine. <laughs> she's always smiling, which does in itself do quite some good because yes. people tend to pay attention. Anyway, welcome, Alice. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to the show. I've got some questions for you. Hit me with them. <laughs> so, obviously something to do with LinkedIn. Yeah. How did it come about? What's your career path? Okay. We did say earlier, don't start at the age of five. Okay. Unless it's particularly It's not my entire life story, pertinent. but all right. Um, so I always, career-wise, always been in marketing communications. Um, and I think I was most interested about relationships, storytelling, and the impact that when you put those two together, what it can have. So I worked as a press officer on the Olympic Games in London in 2012. And for me, that was the time when I saw that impact that had been happening. So, you know, I had this incredible opportunity to work with media outlets across the whole UK and uh, even further. And I got to tell all these different stories about the game. So I was working with a charity as part of the game. So we had all of these amazing community stories to be told. What a time um, that was as well. Oh, uh, yeah, the that best That was an amazing time. time Literally right? incredible. And I mean, I could do you a whole show on all the different <laughs> stories that I had from that time. But I think doing that just made me know how much I loved communications. So off the back of London 2012, I then worked for Hampshire Fire and Rescue Service. So I was in their press team. Um, and that was when social media was evolving. Mm -hmm. So they had got Facebook when I joined, but I brought in other social media channels for them, trained up lots of firefighters to use like local Twitter um, channels so that they could engage with their community. And yeah, it was just a really good time to, again, bring communities together, seeing the power of messages you could get out there and the difference it would make in your communications. And so then 2018 came knocking and it was a great time for me to, to go on my own. Um, and I will tell this bit of the story because I think it's important. But when I first set out, because in my previous roles, I'd done press releases, copywriting, social media, um, media training, like I'd done so many different things. I thought, well, if I offer all of them, then I must get a business take off the <laughs> ground because, um, you know, people all want different things. But because that was such a hard message to sell, all those different things, I really struggled at the beginning. And it was only when I took a seat, step back and thought, OK, so social media seems to be where most of the questions I get, like in networking, the discussion points I always had were around social media and people struggling with it. But then even within that, it was about LinkedIn because the other social media platforms, lots of people did in their personal lives, like Facebook and Instagram, and they kind of understood them. It was just content creation was still tricky. But LinkedIn was the one that it's like, I would need to be perfect to be there because it's the business platform and I'm just too scared to do it and I just don't know how to make the most of it. And I thought, well, LinkedIn's my favourite one. Um, so why Was it always? Because I... it's changed no. a lot. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, but... it wasn't always. So mm. I, when I, I studied journalism at university and it was my lecturer there when LinkedIn kind of first came out and she was like, you all need to set up a LinkedIn profile. And I remember looking at her going, I don't want to. I really don't want LinkedIn. It's never going to go 
going to anywhere. <laughs> and here I am, the irony. Um, but yeah, so at this time when the business was, LinkedIn was definitely my favourite because I think it had become my favourite because of what I'd also got out of it. Mm. So all the new connections, the networking, the leads I had started to get had come through LinkedIn and I was like, this is the perfect platform for business owners who want to network, who want to meet other business owners. This is a no brainer. Like it's not got all the noise that a lot of the other channels, social media channels have. And I was like, I could really support other people here. Um, and I just niched down into LinkedIn. And even within that, you know, about how people can use it free organically. Um, and ever since then, my business, I think the message has been much clearer to to talk to people about. But yeah, I just love now what I do. So It's interesting, isn't it, that you, that bit about niching down yeah. made your audience bigger, not smaller. Yes, yeah. Was Absolutely. that quite quick because people had something to hook into? Yeah, I think the important thing was I hadn't just picked what I loved. It ended up being the thing that I loved, but I'd been listening to people. So every time I'd gone networking, I was paying attention. I used to write it down as I used to go out of the networking meetings, like the things that people had talked to me about. And it was always social media and it was always linked in within that. And so I just thought there is a need here. There's obviously a market for it. And at that time, I didn't, I knew of like one or two other LinkedIn trainers. Um, but I just think LinkedIn was really underutilized. And I just thought, I think there's a, a space I can step into here. And yeah, as soon as I did start being clearer with my messaging, I think it automatically then just translates into better conversations, new leads, inquiries. And yeah, it's a good message, isn't it? For all networkers all business owners that are thinking i don't want to give up ground because i can yeah. do all this other stuff do you ever get yeah i do into, you still do I some do. PR and I have work some, and... you know long-standing clients i still do copywriting for but i don't actively promote that um because it would just weaken my linkedin message mm, so yeah I just what do you do like LinkedIn. about linkedin I, so this phrase about the noise on LinkedIn, I think there is less noise mm -hmm. there to cut through with your business messaging than on other social media platforms. And I know lots of people are probably going to think, but I see loads of personal posts now on LinkedIn, like it's starting to become noisy there. But I think it's still different. Like mm -hmm. when we are, you know, we talk about people that like people and network, we want to know what you think about things and what you're doing in your personal life. You've just talked about um, going up for the award ceremony. So we now know something about you two and the family, only family business. And that helps us to bond with you two. So the same thing goes on LinkedIn. If we only shared pictures of our dogs and what we ate on a Sunday for our roast, yeah, yeah. it's probably not going to get us any business. But giving some parts of ourselves on there alongside or in a business context it does actually help people to relate to you for your content to resonate with them. Um, and I think there is still a much better balance on LinkedIn. So I love that I have a tool, a platform where I can go and it is a business networking place. I haven't got to go and find people as such. They are just there. And I think like that's an indispensable tool as a business owner to have. You just described it as a business networking space. Yes. yeah elaborate because that's very important so I often say to clients my clients that I don't think of LinkedIn as a social media tool so I know it technically fits into that category but quite often as business owners even I will say this and I know I'm a marketing person but a lot of people that go into being an entrepreneur setting up business are not a marketing person but it's something we all have to do and so I've been there when you write on your to-do list do social media or do more of it. <laughs> and of course, there will always be something you think, I probably should do this other thing first. And it just drops down. It never gets off your to-do list. But if you wrote on there, like something about it, a business networking space, like we all choose to go to only groups, don't we? Because we want to be there. Mm -hmm. So if we can describe and put in our head this approach to LinkedIn, that it's a really good place to go. It's healthy for our business. It's a fun place to go. We can enjoy creating content. Then actually, like just calling it something different can be just that mindset shift that we need. So it's, it's like the office chat, isn't it? You know, what we used to have. I yeah. mean, if you think of it in terms of someone was saying about the fact I don't get shown in, information that I necessarily care about, I want more business stuff. But 
aren't I right in thinking that LinkedIn gives you what you ask for? Yeah. So if you yeah. keep engaging or lurking, I mean, I'm assuming it can tell how long I read a post. It does, even yeah. Even if I don't engage with it. Yeah. So if I'm just constantly being shown, oh, there's another argument about so-and-so, or people going, oh, it's not another poll. Mm -hmm. Am I right in saying it's probably because that's the bit that you're engaging Absolutely. on? It thinks you're interested in. Absolutely. So, it, like you said, even it's not even just what you comment on or what you like on, just how much a post sits on your screen for. If you've scrolled past it, you've told LinkedIn, I'm not really interested mm. in that or it hasn't caught my eye. If you stop, so for example, if you had like a competitor on LinkedIn and you were always stopping to look at their content, guess what? Your newsfeed's going to be filled with that person's content because <laughs> LinkedIn yeah. think you want to see it and they will always want to put content in front of you that's going to keep you on the platform longer. So if you've started to see lots of polls, well, guess what? If you're probably engaging on polls because they're super easy to do that with, LinkedIn think you want to see more polls, so they're going to give you more of them. It's like people used to moan about, oh, the sun and the rubbish they print, but you still kept buying <laughs> it, still it, it, didn't you? Yeah. Do you use LinkedIn the same as you do the other? Because I'm just sat here thinking, because I wouldn't look at LinkedIn at the weekend. I, very rarely, unless, um, and I don't normally have the notifications on, but if I've gone onto emails and somebody's tagged me, I might look. But I'd probably wait till Monday to engage with it. Yeah. Are you like that or do you, because you're so into it, do you use it as you would Facebook, etc.? Yeah, I'm a little bit of both. So definitely before, it kind of was a Monday to Friday 9 to 5 mm. platform. And I had that mentality of like, well, I'll go in there in business hours. Um, but now, like if you post on a Saturday and Sunday, it's probably going to get a similar reaction post views as if you post in the week. And that is really different to how it ever used to be. Mm. If you used to post on the weekend, you'd get the audience that's there, but the audience would be a lot less. And now there's not really much difference at all mm. through the seven days. Mm. So it's almost like, well, if there are going to be people there, if you want to meet them, True. it could be a different audience that's there during the week. Um, so I tend to just think, when is the right time for my content, like the style of what I'm talking about? And if it fits on a weekend, I'll definitely be posting then. So People are maybe in a different mindset, a bit more relaxed. This yeah. is always your point anyway, when you think about it, that we used to talk about work-life balance yeah. and differentiation. But yeah. if you love what you do and if you're a dedicated business owner... There isn't much of a line between no, not really. personal and work. Therefore, why can't we kind of blend them together? Yeah. Mm. And yeah. you're right. Some of the content you'll now see on LinkedIn at the weekend, it's the the business owner at the weekend. Yes. So um, I did a post a little while ago that was about a Saturday morning and I just wanted to clear my head. So I went, I live in Portsmouth. So I went and sat on the seafront. I took a picture of the sea, posted it on LinkedIn and talked about needing a little break sometimes mm. in business. Um, I'll see other people that have said what they're doing with their kids that are the weekend and how they're so lucky to have had their business during the week is that they can now spend this time mm. um, with their family. So you can be slightly more personal content, but it's still got that business angle to it. And mm. some people don't want that, do they? But I do think it's becoming harder in business to completely segment yeah. the two. And that's it's just quite an old, outdated idea, I think, isn't it? Yeah, well, things have changed. But you mm. saying that, I think the weekend stuff is like a roundup of the week. Yeah. What does a weekend like? There's quite often Take debates stop. about do you work yeah. in weekends and stuff. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's, interesting. it's changed loads in the last mm -hmm. couple of years, I think, LinkedIn. Yes, What's yeah. the headlines there for you? What, how do you think it's changed? So, I think it's changed in the number of people using it and how they're using it. And that probably sounds really broad. But so, as a statistic, LinkedIn said April 2020, so literally as the world locked down, they saw a 2,400% increase in wow. engagement on LinkedIn. So, literally, when we couldn't do our business in the normal way, everyone went to LinkedIn. And because then we were locked down for a while, and obviously, lots of countries have gone through this over the last 18 months we've stayed there it's not just been we were locked down for two weeks and the world went back to normal and so we did something temporarily and then we've forgotten about it people have stayed on linkedin because it's the business tool it's that networking space and people have stayed there um the whole of 2020 they said that they saw more converse 50 percent more conversations happening on the platform so conversations are comments on people's content it's behind the scenes direct messages so now linkedin definitely used to be a platform for viewing lots of people used to view content and didn't used to engage and partake Reading articles in it. and yeah. blogs about 
yeah best practice yeah. and stuff wasn't it yeah, yeah. like 90 percent or even higher than that of the usership on linkedin would be on it regularly but would never partake would never like anything or comment um that's massively changed now there's still a massive percentage of people doing that um so i always say to people don't fixate necessarily on likes and comments they do show you that your content's landed well and it's resonated but actually the amount of people me and my clients have said I've just got this new client from LinkedIn and they've said they've been following my post for ages. I've never seen them like or comment on it. Yeah. So we lot. never know what's going on in the background and we should never kind of do our value or our worth on LinkedIn by the likes and the comments that we're getting because you just never know what you're building in the background. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think it has changed, but all for the better. So, yes, yeah. good. Final thing, yeah. Net, just tell us a little bit about networking. What's mm -hmm. your story? And how do you feel about online in particular? So, yeah, big journey for me. So when I first went networking, when I first, the business first started, obviously before pandemic, um, I was the introvert that knew I had to do it, but a bit nervous. I would rehearse my 60 second pitch, like word perfect for <laughs> ages before I went in. Um, I do like people in terms of having conversations. So I didn't just sit in a corner. I was good at going out and talking to people. Um, but that was really out of my comfort zone. And as soon as the time was up, I'd be one of the first out of the room. <laughs> um, but now I love online networking. So A, it blends in perfectly with my offering, which is all online. Um, but I just think the, the structure of it, the way that we can meet more people. So in the same amount of time or even in less time, I have more access to people, whether we're talking about, you know, only or using LinkedIn. I can find so many more people and I'm in a bit more control over the conversations that I want to invest in. Um, it's lovely to meet so many people, of course, but yeah, there's just, I just, yeah, I love it. So, and Only has been a big part of that journey because I had known about Only prior to the lockdown, but because of the travel involved and all of that, I'd always thought, oh, I'll do it another time or next month. Then when you moved online, I was like, Andy said, you've got to <laughs> come, you've got to come. So I jumped on in and I was like, loved the structure. And of course, you've got your home group where you can really get to know people, which is so amazing. But then you have access to all of these other meetings which means you can meet people all over the UK. So, um, like, I have a membership now, um, and I have so many members that literally span the whole of the UK mm. and wider, But and a lot of that's come from Only. So, you know, if you have an online offering, like, maximise Only. It's so true. This yeah. is better than... Just doing your little plug, aren't I? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just doing our content. For there you go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Amazing. I'm very yeah. aware of the time, but Alice, we could talk all day. It's been brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, really good. Fantastic. Really I'm looking forward to Only Talks yeah. as well. More yeah. LinkedIn goodness. So, well, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Alice. This thank has you. been the Only Networking Show. Please share, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you again next month.